In this chapter we will talk about rotation of rigid bodies. So far we have learned about translational motion and the center of masses of objects and how they behave when irregular shaped bodies move. In this section we will look into the details of the physical quantities on motion of bodies in a rotating trajectory. As we know, when objects move it produces kinetic energy and this is also true for rotational motion. Here we will examine such behavior and how the center of mass affects its physical quantities and introduce concepts about moment of inertia of objects as it moves rotationally. We also introduce equation of motion that is related to its translational motion at a condition that is constant angular acceleration. Here we have a rigid body rotating counterclockwise and as it moves the position theta changes. If we consider a point P inside the rigid body this point also moves with an equal speed as the entire body. We learned this earlier that the masses composing of a rigid body moves as one. Of course this is an assumption done to get a good approximate to solve problems involving internal and external forces where internal forces or interaction are ignored. The motion of the of this point travels a distance s1 at time t1 at a position theta1. As it progresses to a later position theta2 at time t2 the total distance traversed by this point is equal to its arc equals to radius times the change in theta. Objects moving will have some velocity or velocity counterpart. In this case it is the angular velocity w. To measure the average angular velocity is equal to the change in its position theta over time. To determine the angular velocity at an instant we use the instantaneous angular velocity which is the derivative of theta over the derivative of time. The instantaneous angular velocity is useful when considering a curved path that is changing. As what we have learned from motion on straight path we can also get an equivalent of acceleration. Here we have the average angular acceleration or alpha average which is the change in angular velocity over change in time. Also, the instantaneous angular acceleration which is the derivative of angular velocity over the derivative of time. Here we can compare the quantities for rotational and straight motion. We see that they are identical in so many sense. To write an expressions for rotational motion with constant angular acceleration we simply recall the equations of motion for linear acceleration and substitute the quantities for rotational motion. Here we get the equations for rotational motion which is a comparison to the linear motion. We can relate the two types of motion the rotational and translational. We learned this earlier about tangential velocities which we will talk about it again here. If you recall the tangential velocity is the velocity that is tangent to the curved trajectory or path of the object and it is derived from the arc over time derivative.
Here we see that the linear acceleration is the sum of two types of acceleration component. The first one is the tangential acceleration which is a function of related to its tangential velocity which can be expressed as acceleration tangential equals to radius times angular acceleration. The other one is the radial acceleration or as we learned earlier it is also called the centripetal acceleration which we we know as the square of angular velocity times the radius. The sum of the two acceleration is known as the linear acceleration which we utilized so far with the assumption that objects do not rotate. Here we have a phonograph record rotates at 33.33 revolution per minute. Find its angular velocity in radians per second and the speed of a 0.5 cm from the center. First we convert the angular velocity from rev per minute to radians per seconds which we obtain as 3.49 radians per seconds. For the speed at 0.5 cm we use the formula for the tangential velocity since it is the velocity that describes the nature of the problem. The equation for the tangential velocity is equal to its radius times its angular velocity which we obtain the value of 0.1745 m per seconds. Here we have the same problem but it starts from rest and accelerates with constant angular acceleration to 33.33 rpm in 2 seconds. We are asked to find the angular acceleration and the angle turned through, in degrees and in revolutions. We also add to this problem some assumptions that it also starts at time 0 at a position of theta not 0. To find the angular acceleration alpha we use the formulation of average angular acceleration which is the change in angular velocity over the change in time and gives as a value of 1.74 radians per second square. To determine the position as it turns at this point in time we use the equation of motions for rotational at a constant alpha. Here we see that with the given and plus the value of acceleration we can use equations 2, 3, or 4. For this case we use the equation 2. We then substitute the values that are present and obtained a theta at time 2 seconds but we need to convert this to degrees and revolutions. For degrees we simply convert this by multiplying it by 360 degrees over 2 pi radians and get a value that is around 200 degrees. And for revolutions we multiply the value obtained by multiplying it by 1 revolution over 2 pi radians and get a value of 0.55 revolution. As we know by now when objects move it produces kinetic energy. For this system shown we imagine multiple particles at different positions and lengths. The kinetic energy expression for a single particle can be expressed in terms of its radius and its angular velocity. So for mulet pull bodies moving in a circular motion so the total kinetic energy is the sum of these individual masses. We then rewrite the total kinetic energy for a rotating body as the sum of the individual masses. Here we will derive the expression of total kinetic energy in terms of the moment of inertia. So, when we factor out the one half since it is a constant and square of angular velocity which remains the same for all particles since they move like one body. We simplify the equation of the total kinetic energy is equal to one half times i times the square of the angular velocity. Here I represents the moment of inertia of an object. The moment of inertia varies for different types of bodies and different position of the axis of rotation. Shown in the figure are different types of shape of an object and we see that for a slender rod figures A and B have different moment of inertia due to the position of rotation. Figures C and D are the moment of inertias for a rectangular plate but the difference is that the orientation of rotation is changed. Other objects are also observed to have different moment of inertia.
parallel axis theorem allows the user to determine the moment of inertia of an object when the new axis of rotation is parallel to the moment of inertia which is positioned at the center of mass of the object. In this problem we are asked to find the moment of inertia at one end of a rod with mass m given the moment of inertia at the center of the rod as shown in the figure. First step is to use recall the moment of inertia of rod that rotates around its center and the expression for the parallel axis theorem. We then substitute the moment of inertia to the parallel axis equation and we get that the moment of inertia at one end is equal to one third times mass times square of its length. For irregularly shaped objects we can calculate them using its integral form. So if the material looks linear but oddly shaped we can use the linear distribution calculation for its moment of inertia. Similarly for objects that has an irregular shape but in three dimension or has volume then we can use the expression shown where the density is factored out. Here we have an, an airplane propeller is rotating at a constant angulat velocity 1900 revolution per minute. Letter A we are asked to compute the propeller's angular velocity in radians per seconds. Letter B we ask to find how long in seconds does it take for the propeller to turn through 35 degrees. First we simply convert the angulat velocity which is in revolution per minute to radians per seconds by multiplying it by 2 times pi over revolution. This is then multiplied by 1 minute over 60 seconds and we get an expression of the angular velocity which is around 200 radians per seconds. For letter B, we convert the angular velocity to degrees per seconds, then we choose one of the equations of motion for rotating objects at constant alpha. We see that equation 2 would fit nicely to our problem. We rewrite equation 2 to get an expression for time t then substitute the values that are present and we see that the time needed to reach the position 35 degrees is around 3.10 times 10 to the power of negative 3 seconds or around 3 milliseconds. Here we have an airplane propeller is 2.08 meters in length, from tip to tip, and has a mass of 117 kilograms. The propeller is rotating at 2400 revolution per minute about an axis through its center. For letter A, what is its rotational kinetic energy? Treat propeller as a slender rod. For letter B if it were not rotating, how far would it have to drop in free fall to acquire the same kinetic energy? First step we compare it with the table of different shapes and its corresponding moment of inertia. For a slender rod its moment of inertia is equal to 1 over 12 times mass times length of the rod squared. We also recall that the total kinetic energy is given by 1 half times moment of inertia times the square of angular velocity. We substitute the expression for the moment of inertia and simplify the expression. We then substitute the values that are present to this expression and get that the value for the kinetic energy is about 133 times 10 to the power of 3 joules or 133 kilojoules. Now if the scenario asks us to determine the height of the fall of the propeller that is equivalent to the energy it has produced then we have to use the potential energy due to gravity since it can provide us the height parameter that we need. So. Equating the potential energy and kinetic energy that we are suggesting that the kinetic energy is being converted to potential energy. Then rewriting the expression to determine the height and substituting the needed values we get that the height is around 1.16 meters.
Now in this case we have three masses that are attached to a connecting massless rod. We are asked to find the I about an axis coinciding rod B and C. Letter B to find I at point A or going out of page. And letter C find K at a point A with angular velocity of 4 radians per seconds. First we redraw the problem. And for this case the moment of inertia is bisecting the mass C and B so we see that the length R for these two masses is zero since they directly lie on the axis of rotation. However, for mass A it is positioned at a distance R of 0.4 meters from the axis of rotation. The second step is to use the ideal equation for this position. So for a multi-bodied problem we use the expression of moment of inertia which is the sum of each masses times the distance r squared. So we see that th moment of interior is only provided by mass a since its radius or distance from the axis of rotation is non-zero. So here we get the moment of inertia is equal to 0.048 kg times meter squared. Now we have the second situation where the moment of inertia is at a point A or at the same posit Iona's massa but it is out off page. We redraw the figure in an isometric view and see that the distance R for mass A is zero since it directly lies on the same position as the axis of rotation. However, for mass B and C they are located at position RB equals to 0.5 meters and RC equals to 0.4 meters from the axis of rotation. Using again same equation, we arrive to the value of the moment of inertia when it is position at point A and out of page equals to 0.057 kg times meter squared. For this scenario we rotate the system with an angular velocity of 4 radians per second. To find the kinetic energy for this system we use the expression of kinetic energy which is equal to one half times moment of inertia times the square of angular acceleration. We substitute the value of the moment of inertia earlier to this expression and we get that the kinetic energy total is equal to 0.456 joules. The end for now and I hope you learned something new today. For questions and comments you may send them to diyeslearningstuff at gmail.com. You may review the slide on YouTube at diees at diees learning stuff. Note, please do not forget to use your school email. Also write your complete name and class section. Thank you for listening and see next meeting.